Welcome to Home and Design. I'm Tom Homan. You know, since we started our YouTube channel, we probably have more projects that we've tried and not been able to air than the ones that we've actually posted. Now, one of those projects involved a six month review of my friend Jason's Tesla Model 3. And as part of that project, I wanted to do a little 164th diecast mod so uh, I could make him a little gift as a congratulations for getting his car and for allowing us to intrude and test drive it and do the video. So we're gonna go ahead and do that project today while I tell you the rest of the story. Jason is a kindred spirit, designer, maker, boutique manufacturer, and like the best ones, he doesn't know when to leave well enough alone. So before he even took delivery of his Model 3, he already had in mind some design changes he wanted to make. And the first thing we did was take the front plate bracket off. Now we may or may not have done that in a two plate state, but in addition, we also removed the badge on the front hood and replaced it with a flush mounted piece of uh, radiant chromatic vinyl that kind of alternatively appeared or disappeared depending on the viewing angle. That was super cool. Um, then the final thing he did, which was a, uh, took your breath away, was he powder coated his Tesla sport rims in white. And it looked like a white dish dasha looks against the the gulf desert sands i mean that thing that thing took my breath away every time i saw it later jason upgraded his front seats and while he had a black interior he swapped just the front seats with white ones and he laser etched his company logo on the headrests and the car suddenly started to look more a child of sneaker culture than it what looked like one of transportation design and viewed as such i'll say the car looked like a pair of jordans so we're looking to make this little gift for jason and hot wheels went ahead and came out with their model 3 and the release color i think was this uh tesla's signature red like this one here but soon thereafter fortunately hot wheels came out with their pearl white metallic version of the car and I thought that this one was a little more ripe for us because the the glass was in like a dark transparent instead of just clear transparent so this became our promising model to go ahead and try and make look like Jason's model 3 but had I had to use either of these models I would have had to take the paint off and um, repaint them in uh, metallic dark gray like Jason's. Now, here's an example of a project we have underway here, of a 64 Lincoln Continental, where we don't like the crazy police tampo. We don't know what they were going for here, but um, in order to make it look like a traditional 64 or even a cool custom 64, uh, we've gone ahead and put paint stripper on this one and we've got it all the way down to the raw Zymac. So, uh, this one would be ready for a new coat of paint, and we were at the same place with this project for Jason. Now, fortunately, Hot Wheels finally came out with their Midnight Silver Metallic Edition. And that made this project as simple as doing a little wheel swap and some custom paint. You may wonder why I've got so many examples of a given model. And that's because it can be so challenging to find... Uh, at least at the 99 cent level, a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox car where the tampos are in place, where the hood ornament is centered. And after that, especially for a model like this, where the whole roof is glass or plastic, to find one that's not scratched or marred in some way during the production process is uh, it's like finding a unicorn. So we've got a few of them. We'll look for a good one. I think I picked some good ones here, so we'll go ahead and open one. And immediately see we've got some scratches along the top, but uh, 
This body looks great. The tampos look good. I think these Hot Wheels 10 spokes do a great job of indicating the Tesla Sport rim. We just want to find an example in white to suggest Jason's custom powder coating. So the first thing we'll do is find a wheel donor with the 10 spokes and we'll drill the rivets out on the bottom of each model so that we can um, harvest the wheels we want to put on to the new car. So we're all set up here. You want a drill bit that says um, just a little less wide probably than the outer limits of the rivet, um, but wider than what I happen to already know the post is. And so as we get through to where the post opens to the rivet head, the rivet head will be gone and we'll still have the post there. So what we'll do is we'll just start with the first rivet. We're going to produce some metal shavings here. And if you thought that I was going to drill this Mexico blue 911 GT3 RS, you're crazy. Now, what I did do, however, is uh, bring a couple acceptable wheel donors and we'll take a look at these and see if they fit our Model 3. Jason's a friend of ours and also a colleague. He's the founder and owner of Big Secret Laser Engraving. They do really cool projects. Uh, I'll post a link to their website in the description. Jason uh, works with legendary designers like Kevin Cantrell and Jessica Hirsch. He's made some super cool premiums and even personal gifts for J.J. Abrams um, and uh, Neil Patrick Harris and others. He designs products for Theory 11, some of the most exclusive uh, packaging for their playing cards. Well, Jason and I are both also Tesla enthusiasts. And back in 2016, we were a couple of the tens of thousands of people who camped out overnight at a Tesla service center so that he could put down a deposit on his Model 3. It was a banner moment for electric vehicles and within a week, Tesla had over 350,000 reservations. All right, we've got these things drilled apart. It's time to swap the wheels. Today's 99 cent Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars have plastic bases and die cast bodies. So simpler than ever to go ahead and do a wheel swap. All you have to do is clip one of the pins on each of these little set of retention clips and pull out your wheels. Now, on the car we're keeping, I'm gonna make that cut a little shallower in hopes that the wheels snap in and out a little better. It's not essential, but if I try, we may get a snap fit. Now we'll go ahead and put our white wheels in. And that looks better. Okay, we're most of the way there. However, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and paint these front seats. Two years later, Jason's Model 3, which he called Carmen, an obvious play on Electra, was ready and delivered. And as I mentioned, we were intended to do a six-month review of that car. It was 2018 and we were at the high watermark of Tesla FUD. Now that FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And this is uh, the kind of seeds that short sellers will sow uh, as they engage in negative PR campaigns to try to bring a stock price down. Now, I thought that sharing the story of the Tucker Torpedo and comparing the mission of traditional institutions to try to sink his project back then and uh, compare that to the story of Elon Musk and Tesla that was at fever pitch in 2018 would be interesting. So we went up to Charlottesville, Virginia, and I did a little walk and talk and shared the Tucker story amid the fall leaves. And we shot some drone footage of the car uh, along the Blue Ridge Mountains. But that day, we couldn't finish the whole script before we lost our light. And the following week, a huge storm came through and the next weekend, there were no more leaves. Note to self, 
if you want to shoot in those kinds of changing conditions like fall leaves or a fresh snow drift, get it done that day or be prepared not to get it done at all. So if you want to actually hear me revisit the Tucker and Tesla stories, go ahead and let us know in the comments below and we'll see if we can't revisit some of that footage or maybe reshoot that project. So since that day that we didn't pull the shoot together, we've been meaning to get back to it and we regrouped, we strategized, we prepared, but then wham, the Tesla Model 3 is no more. Second note to self, maybe a finished video project today is better than a perfect one tomorrow where your starring Tesla is total. So now, I guess our little project here is more of a consolation gift than a congratulations gift. Because while Jason is already up and running in a performance Model Y, uh, he admits that he doesn't have quite the same emotional connection as he did to Carmen. So we've got our paint finished here. And one last thing I wanted to demonstrate is how you can take a toothpick and erase some of your mistakes. Now the paint wicks onto some surfaces. This is a single casting, so one element bleeds into the next. It makes it very hard to paint. But with the toothpick, I can come in here, especially when the paint's dry enough but not fully dry, and I can kind of scratch it away, erasing some of that bleed, and just sharpening up the details a little bit. Now, these aren't great, but uh, we've got full opacity. They pop because they're white. And underneath of our canopy, it's really going to start to play. And then further obscured by the singular A to C pillar that the Tesla has. I think this works perfectly. So the last thing we have to do is reassemble our Tesla by drilling and tapping the posts and replacing our rivet heads with some little button head screws. I've got a little kit here I have for drilling apart Hot Wheels cars. I've got a set of taps for a 256, tiny little 256 button head screws we have to replace the rivet with. I keep handy in there the little 1 16th uh, inch drill bit that we'll need to drill these posts with. We don't want to end up drilling through the hood of the car here. So we want to mark the drill bit at our maximum depth. And so the first thing I'll do is see how deep we can go. And mark my drill bit. All right, so I've revealed the part of my drill bit that we can use here without any risk. That's how far we're going to want to plunge it. All right, and we're there. Now we'll do the back. Okay, so our next step is going to be to tap these holes. Now, I have a nice little set of 256 taps in three formats. I've got my taper chamfered tap that allow me to get the hole started quite easily because it starts cutting the threads very gradually as you go up the um, shaft of the drill. Then I've got a plug chamfered tap, and that allows us to go in a little further. The, the full threads start a little sooner. Now, I could run either one of these taps all the way through a through hole if I was able to come back out the top of the car, which we're not. So in order to cut the most threads possible down into a, 
a hole that bottoms out where we've marked our drill, I want to use this bottoming tap. And that's going to allow us to get the full reach down inside the hole that we've drilled to create enough threads for us to find purchase. And it won't take much with, with our tiny little 256 button head screws that are only an eighth inch long. So we're going to go ahead and do this in three steps. Now, I can't say enough about the importance of using oil when you're tapping. Now, I'm in the middle of moving some things around. I couldn't find my three-in-one oil or anything else. So in a cleaning kit I had, I found some mineral oil. And believe me, I'd have used olive oil if it came to it. Uh, but this is what we found. I think I have this for cleaning butcher blocks on a, some film shoot in the past. So I'm going to get a little oil in the cap and just use that as a reservoir from which to moisten the tap as we work here. So I'll go ahead and start with the taper chamfer tap. Rig it up. I can just do this by hand. It's going to be very simple. Get a little oil on here. Okay, all that's left now is to reassemble the car. Uh, we've got our base with the white tin spokes on it. We found, uh, we've got our painted seats. I found the best canopy I could find among our donors. And we get it reassembled. Now we've got our tapped holes for these Tiny 256 button head screws that can be quite the little challenges. There we go. Awesome. All right, there we go. Carmen Electra, Jason's Tesla Model 3. Okay, we're gonna send this to Jason with our condolences, and we'd love to ask you to help these videos reach a larger audience by hitting that thumbs up button. In addition, you can subscribe and get notified. Each step you take assists the YouTube system in getting this content in front of the right eyeballs. You can support us on our Patreon page so that we can bring you more of the making and design thinking content that you love. As always, thanks again for watching Home and Design.